This is the Pininfarina Batista, a hypercar that's had a good, long, studious look at the hypercar manual and then torn it to pieces with its teeth. To say this thing is slightly deranged might be a little bit of an understatement. What we're looking at here is what Pininfarina calls the world's first pure electric luxury Hyper GT. It'll go up against the likes of the forthcoming Rimac Concept 2, Tesla Roadster, hybrids like the McLaren Speedtail, and if we're talking about power, I don't know, God? I think I'll get straight to the numbers because everything else kind of pales into insignificance. Power, 1,900 horses. Torque, 2,300 newton meters. Emissions, none. It's difficult to wrap your head around those kinds of numbers, but I'll put it another way. This is a road car with almost twice the power of a Formula One racing car, more than three times the torque of a McLaren F1, and the same environmental footprint as a Nissan Leaf. Now, Pininfarina are saying acceleration is going to be savage, 0 to 60 in under two seconds. That's F1 level of acceleration. 0 to 186 miles per hour will take 12 seconds, quicker than a McLaren Speedtail, and it will have a VMAX just north of 217 miles per hour. You just don't see those kinds of numbers on a normal road car, and there's a reason for that. They're just not possible using an internal combustion engine. Pininfarina say, if you want this kind of acceleration, you have to go electric. Under the skin, they've used a big T-shaped lithium manganese nickel battery pack with a 120 kilowatt hour capacity supplied by the guys and girls at Rimac. It's essentially the same unit you get in a Rimac Concept 2, and it's big enough for a range of 450 kilometers. That battery pack feeds electrons to four separate electric motors, one for each wheel. As you'd expect, this allows for torque vectoring. The car can intelligently send more or less power to each wheel independently to aid handling or hypothetically switch between rear wheel drive and all wheel drive to suit your taste. Those motors deliver instant torque, so much torque and so instantly that most of this car's driving modes actually limit the amount of torque you have available in order to give the driver a little bit of thinking space before the car launches you into the next postcode. As for noise, well, they're promising it won't be completely silent. Pininfarina say you'll not only hear the motors, but they're also working on an artificial sound that fits the car's personality. Think Tron 2.0. Those motors also provide an element of energy recuperation through braking, but Pininfarina hasn't cheaped out on the traditional brakes. Here, they've installed massive 390 mm carbon ceramic discs attached to six pot calipers. So the Batista should stop just as violently as it accelerates. I wanted to get the numbers out of the way first because they're so ludicrous. But design is very important because design is what Pininfarina is most famous for. The company made its name styling some of the most iconic cars on the planet, not to mention a few not so iconic ones. If you remember the Hyundai Matrix, you'll know what I'm talking about. Pininfarina has kept the finest piece of design for themselves though. This thing is genuinely stunning. There's a lot going on here. I can almost see little bits of Ferrari influence towards the front maybe a touch of McLaren 720S in this teardrop-shaped roof section. And I can almost see a little bit of BMW i8 here going on towards the rear. The body is made entirely of carbon fiber, on top of which we have this sweeping teardrop-shaped glass canopy. At the front, you'll see a single dynamic LED light strip between the headlights used as a DRL and indicator, below which you'll find a smattering of passive aerodynamic extras. At the side, the designers have gone for quite a sensual but well-sculpted look. Let's start with these wing mirrors. Now, these are actually functional aero devices. They funnel air along the side of the car and into these vents feeding the radiators. Air also flows over the top of the car and onto this split rear spoiler. Now, naturally, this is an active unit that provides three levels of downforce and also acts as an air brake. Now, let's talk doors. This wouldn't be a pure electric luxury Hyper GT if it didn't have silly doors, right? And luckily, this has some of the silliest in the business. Check this out. Butterfly doors, very cool. And these are hinged on the roof itself to give you an even larger opening to help you get in and out more easily. 
Speaking of which, be rude not to. Oh yes. I could get used to this. Screens everywhere, leather, lots of buttons I want to press. The whole thing is designed around the vanishing point concept. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but what I can see is that there are three primary displays. On the left-hand side, we have a screen showing all your driving dynamics and car settings. On the right-hand side, you have your media and your sat-nav, and in the center, all your vital information, including your gears and what speed you're doing. As for buttons, well, it's a very minimalist design. There aren't too many in here, but on the left-hand side, you do get a drive mode selector, which can let you select Pura, Energica, and the most violent mode of all, Furiosa. Plus in the center, you have your gear selector switch, essentially, which puts you in drive, neutral, park, or reverse. The whole thing, upholstery-wise, can be customized to within an inch of this car's life, which is another carrot that Pininfarina is dangling in front of prospective buyers. Pininfarina's objective with the Batista is to create a blank canvas and work with customers to create something that reflects their individual personalities. You'll probably never see two Batistas that look the same, but they should all look incredibly cool, whether it's this matte gray with blue accents and aluminum detailing, that's my favorite, or the Pininfarina blue with chrome highlights, actually, that's my favorite, or the pure pearlescent white, classic, understated, striking, and also my favorite. It's all very lovely and all very exclusive, as you might expect. Only 150 examples will be built, which means that by the time the car's released in 2020, many of us might not actually get a chance to see one in the carbon, which would be a massive shame because it is, it's just beautiful. Now, in terms of pricing, Pininfarina haven't yet announced a figure, but if you've got to ask, you might be better off shopping around for something like a BMW i3. Elon, your move, buddy.